and thank you for joining us here on All Things Heart. I'm Alexis Delsted. We are working hard on the upcoming season of All Things Heart to bring you some incredible, exciting programs in the coming weeks and months. This morning, we have an encore presentation of one of our favorite episodes for you. So sit back and enjoy this best of All Things Heart. And he's back to everything. And that's just wonderful because a few years ago, I thought I lost him. Horrible pain had his doctor stumped and his wife so worried. Today on All Things Heart, the diagnosis, the life-changing surgeries, and what you need to know if it happens to you. From the University of Kansas Health System. I am amazed. The team here is great. I came on a Tuesday and then by Saturday I had a heart in me. I have never seen a group of people work together so good as this team of heart specialists. I mean, it's just unreal. Stand by to set up show. And the Dolph C. Simons Jr. Family Broadcast Studio. Roll it. Always makes you feel like you're the most important patient on the planet. I felt heard and that was really big. This is All Things Heart. Good morning, it's Thursday, September 29th. I'm Alexis Del Cid and welcome back to All Things Heart. Every Thursday at 10 a.m., we give you direct access to our doctors to ask your heart-related questions. Here's what we're talking about today. A Kansas man spent six weeks in a nursing home with COVID, and if that wasn't terrifying enough, when he got out, he developed a second serious health condition with his vascular system. We break down the connection to his heart, what to do if it happens to you, and as always, we love when you send us your questions. Our viewers here are the heartbeat of this program. You can send us any of your questions to YouTube, Facebook, and All Things Heart email. You can find the links right there on your screen. Today we're talking about something called PAD, peripheral artery disease. It's when the vessels that carry your blood from your legs become blocked or narrowed. When the man you're about to meet developed his peripheral artery disease, the doctors were stumped. That is, until he finally saw a doctor here at the University of Kansas Health System's Center for Vascular Care. We started with two, now we've got about 100. I love uh, my fish pond. After a season of health problems, Ron Kimes is back. I am in the best shape that I've been in in the last three years. And if you spend an afternoon with Ron and his wife, Deanna, at their Ottawa property, two things are clear. One, they adore each other. And two, after more than 60 years together, they have some great stories. I'm a year and a half older than Ron. So when he came to school, I was a junior and he was a freshman. And he said, how does an underclassman get a date with an upperclassman around here? And I just looked at him very firmly and I said, they don't. <laughs> and that was when I threw the gloves down and said, the challenge has been given. Building a full life doesn't come without the occasional speed bump, like the time Ron cut off his finger making a birdhouse for their daughter and Deanna was ordered to find it. And the first thing I said was, I cut off my finger. She said, no, no, go out in the garage and look for his finger. I said, are you kidding me? Or recently when Ron wiped out on his bike. I got on my bicycle. She wasn't home. <laughs> but in the summer of 2021, Ron got hit with something that all but leveled him. I started having pains in, my le in, in this leg, uh, a lot of pain, and uh, it just wouldn't go away. And uh, it just uh, sometimes would be unbearable. A pain so searing, at times Ron could barely stand or even sit up. His doctors were stumped. Deanna was worried sick until Ron was finally sent to the University of Kansas Health System's Center for Advanced Vascular Care, where they met Dr. Axel Thors. We had so much confidence in Dr. Thor, and he, he, was, just, he was just so great and so personable. Dr. Thors is one of a kind. Dr. Thors diagnosed Ron with peripheral artery disease, a condition that restricts blood flow to his legs. He also had a plan, but ultimately it would take three surgeries, one in Ron's neck. And it was a short time between this and this. Deanna was incredibly nervous, but she had to put it all aside and trust that Dr. Thors would restore life to the cutest underclassman she'd ever met. And we are thrilled to have that cute underclassman joining us now, Ron, Ron Kimes, joining us virtually. Thank you for being here, Ron. And we also have his doctor in studio with me, vascular surgeon, 
Dr. Axel Thoris. Thanks for being here, Dr. Thoris. My pleasure. I want to start with Ron. Um, Ron, how are you feeling today? And how long has it been since that final surgery on your neck? I feel great. The, the surgery, I think, was done last February. Um, and uh, I'm doing everything now that uh, I, hasn't, I haven't been able to do for three years. I'm, I'm doing everything now. It was so fun to be out on your property and spend the afternoon with you and Deanna. Uh, I want to talk with Dr. Thors. Dr. Thors, Ron had those three surgeries, one on each leg and then one on his neck. We have video illustrating what happens during those surgeries. So I'd love for you to talk over this video as we roll it and explain uh, what was happening in the legs when you went in there. What did you have to do? Sure. Uh, Ron had a very common condition called peripheral arterial disease, which is an accumulation of plaque on the inside of the arteries. We can just think of this as plumbing to the legs. And over time, plaque can build up. Um, and as you can see depicted here, this is a treatment or one of the treatments of that disease where we can balloon or remodel that artery and at the same time infuse a special drug that helps prevent recurrence of that disease. So um, is that a long, like a long skinny balloon you're putting yeah. up and, there and through so his we, leg? We go from the groin area okay. and we kind of go from the opposite side to treat uh, each leg that we're treating. Um, and uh, 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 depending on the anatomy, uh, this is very successful treatment. And in fact, this is probably the most common treatment that we do now. So the balloon expands once mm -hmm. it's in there, and is it coated with a medication that dissolves whatever is blocking yeah, the artery? Yeah, uh, one of the limiting factors of, uh, of yeah. ballooning an artery open would be um, the body works against us uh, to uh, uh, try to shut that down again because it sees that as an injury. And so the, the medication infused with from the balloon helps to prevent that uh, disease from recurring after a treatment. And then we had a second video that you shared with us and it looked like something was like scooping out mm -hmm. the artery. What's happening yeah. there? So uh, th uh, the second procedure that Ron had was something called atherectomy. So uh, similar uh, scenario, uh, we might use this uh, depending on the lesion, uh, but this is a device that uh, uh, will um, bore out, if you will, for the lack of a better word, um, the plaque and the disease, as you can see depicted, um, and physically remove that uh, so that we can remodel the artery. And then subsequently, we uh, generally will treat the artery with the same treatment we saw just a minute ago with the drug eluding balloon technology. Okay. So. so you do one and the other. And then when we were talking to Ron, Ron said you rotorooted his neck. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure there's a more technical term for that. What did you do to his neck? So Ron had uh, what's called a carotid endarterectomy. So the, the arteries are built like onions. They've got multiple layers to them. And, uh, and we can go in and I can remove the bad layers of the artery, leaving healthy artery uh, behind, uh, somewhat uh, as depicted on the schematic here. Um, Obviously a little bit more complicated mm -hmm. than uh, depicted here, but that gives the general idea. Ron, what's it like seeing these videos and know that that was happening inside you, that Dr. Thors did that to you? Well, I was, number one, I was confident because I was told that this doctor uh, was one of the best. And so when I went in and he sat down and explained everything to me uh, and my wife, uh, you know, I didn't go in with any trepidation. I wasn't uh, going in with any fearful uh, possibilities. I just knew that things were going to be taken care of. And uh, when he explained it to me, like I said earlier, it was kind of like Roto-Rooter, uh, but in the sense of doing the uh, ballooning, I understood that. And then when he went to the other leg, I thought there was just one, uh, but when he got into it, there were two places that uh, he had to take care of. Uh, and then he said, you know, because of my uh, vascular problems, uh, it'd probably be good now to go ahead with the, uh, uh, the uh, artery and, and take mm -hmm. care of it uh, at this time. So within just a few weeks, uh, we did that after the uh, other leg surgery. 
You said when we were talking at your at your house and we came out and met you, the surgery was a breeze, but it was the recovery that was weird for you mentally because you had to stay very still. Can you talk about that? <laughs> yeah, you said I had to lay on my back for four hours. I couldn't oh, move. I couldn't do anything. Um, but you know, after you know, it it really went well. Uh, I had a uh, excellent nurse. Uh, a male nurse, uh, the first time anyway, that I can remember. And uh, through all of that, uh, that time went well, but I uh, was uh, pretty rigid, I guess mm -hmm. you might say, because he said, don't move. I didn't move. <laughs> you didn't move him. I wouldn't either. Because that's, that's about the point, though, where you feel like you get all these phantom itches, right? Like you feel like you want to yes. itch your knee and you want to move. <laughs> yeah, and you want to, yeah, all right. But for four hours, you had to stay still. Why is it so important, Dr. Thoris, to stay that still afterwards? Well, um, many times when we do uh, treatments on the legs, uh, we're accessing an artery that's under very high pressure. Mm -hmm. So if uh, a patient moves too much after that procedure, uh, they can bleed. Uh, there can be uh, injury or dam further damage to the artery. Um, uh, we will also commonly use devices that close uh, the hole that we make in the artery. Mm -hmm. Um, and that minimizes the, the uh, laying flat time, uh, but sometimes, uh, based on anatomy, those devices cannot be used. So right. it, we have to use that selectively. Were Ron's symptoms common, leg pain? Is that pretty much when you get that, you have PAD? Is that the most common? Ron's symptoms symptom? were very typical for this disease and mm -hmm. uh, one of the most important parts of this disease is it can be a precursor to other diseases like what Ron had in his neck. Uh, the disease in the neck can lead to strokes um, and the same disease that affects the legs and the carotid arteries can affect the heart. Mm -hmm. And so whenever somebody presents with peripheral arterial disease, we always have to think about the other things that could be lurking that are asymptomatic. Right, which is super alarming then when you when you start talking and going down that road. We're getting a lot of questions from our viewers. Terry wants to know if surgery is the only treatment option for PAD or if there are medications. Sure, first we always try conservative uh, uh, non-surgical treatments like medication. And there are uh, medications that we can use. Um, many of the things involved just controlling the things, uh, chronic conditions like high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, not smoking, you know, all the things that we know uh, to do. Um, and then, you know, obviously we reserve procedures or surgery for more advanced conditions. Jennifer wants to know if it can happen at any age and if this can happen to women. Uh, the disease can happen to women uh, and it can occur in all ages. However, I would say that it happens in the later generations. Okay. Marie would like to know, and you, you just touched on this, but maybe you can clarify again mm -hmm. how problems in your legs can ultimately relate to the heart, because that is something that many people wouldn't associate with sure. the heart. Sure, yep. And that's uh, the, the biggest takeaway I would say from this is that uh, uh, the plumbing in your body is all connected and so the arteries uh, if you have disease in one area of the body you can certainly have similar disease in other areas of the body and uh, it's a good conversation to have with your doctors and also to evaluate uh, those areas. Jonas wants to know and this is a question for Ron, uh, Ron did peripheral artery disease run in your family? Did anyone else you know have it? I don't think so. I think I was the first one. Nothing was ever said for my uh, parents or my brothers. Uh, I think that I was the uh, first one. So you're the trailblazer in that sense. No one wants to be the trailblazer yeah. for, right. for a medical condition like this. We're so glad you're okay. Uh, and along those lines, Dana writes in, Dana writes, my grandpa had PAD. What warning signs do I need to watch for in me or my parents? Is it genetic? There uh, can be a component uh, that is genetic. Um, I would say the most common things, however, are uh, the more common medical conditions uh, that all of us are prone to get, um, especially with a Western diet, um, and that is high blood pressure, high cholesterol, 
diabetes, uh, you know, uh, those are probably the most common things. And certainly cigarette smoking, uh, we didn't know years ago how damaging that was to the blood vessels, but we certainly know that now, and, and that is a major risk factor for these problems. Ron, were you ever a smoker? Never. I never smoked. Nope. So it's just luck of the draw for some people, unfortunately. It, it can be, yes. Uh, Yen yeah. Liang has a question, uh, one of our Facebook viewers. He would like to know if eye troubles can also indicate an issue like this or a heart, heart problem. Yeah, um, certain um, uh, precursors for strokes and mini strokes can occur in the eye because mm -hmm. that's one of the first branches off of the carotid artery in the neck. Um, now, it doesn't always mean that an eye problem is related to blockage, but it's certainly a good uh, precursor to uh, discuss with your eye physician, an ophthalmologist or optometrist, to look in the eye. Mm -hmm. And uh, just looking in the eye can detect disease like this um, mm, that's because you have blood vessels in the eye as well. So. And we're actually working on a future episode of All Things Heart talking with an ophthalmologist Perfect. about that very issue. Yeah. Um, Wendy has a question for Ron and for Dr. Thors because, man, you got hit with so many things during the pandemic, including COVID. Was it hard to get the surgery scheduled in the pandemic? Because if I'm, if I'm not mistaken on the timeline, it was fairly close to the beginning of the pandemic when this yeah. happened. So I'll ask Dr. Thors, were your surgeries postponed or delayed? Um, well, Unfortunately for most of our patients, they can't wait. Um, mm -hmm. And so uh, not many of our surgeries were delayed or postponed um, because uh, there are pretty significant consequences of waiting um, to do surgery. So um, our, my answer to that would be no, we weren't really halted in our work um, because of the urgency of most of these uh, cases. I wanna ask Ron, first of all, you're fully recovered from COVID, do you have any lingering long haul symptoms? No, the things that I was unable to do for, you know, for basically three years I'm doing now. I mean, I, I couldn't ride a bicycle. Uh, I bicycle often now, uh, I golf again, I, I bowl. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty active. I work in the yard and, and so forth. So, uh, I tell people I'm better off now than I have been in the last three years. Boy, that's good to hear. Is it possible, Dr. Thors, that Ron coming down with COVID could have had something to do with triggering peripheral arterial disease? Um, COVID has its own set of problems and uh, we've been seeing a lot of clotting associated with COVID. Okay. Um, and that can happen in young age and in, uh, uh, in older age. Um, but that COVID in and of itself would not cause or trigger peripheral arterial disease. Okay, so just unrelated again, like bad luck. Correct. COVID <laughs> and then PAD, but. Which we see a lot of here. Yeah, uh, yeah. but you, you get people when they're having really bad luck happen, bad things happen to them yes. and then you fix them. You put Ron back together again and they, <laughs> he and Deanna love you for it. Um, I have a question that just came in from John. John wants to know how closely do the surgeons work with cardiologists before operating? Yeah, uh, here at the University of Kansas, we work very closely with all of our specialists. Um, um, this, these diseases, like I was mentioning, are not unique to the peripheral arterial system. Uh, they affect the heart as well. And so we have a very close working relationship to, with our cardiologists, with our interventional radiologists, uh, uh, really with our cardiac surgeons. So uh, we have a large collaborative team um, to solve a problem here. Um, and I think that's the, the best way to take care of patients. It's a whole team, it's a whole set of different, different people with different skill sets, all using their unique knowledge to come together to help your right. patients. Yeah. Uh, question from Jean for Ron. She wants to know if you have any lingering pain. No, no. from the surgeries and everything, absolutely not. Uh, immediately the, the, the pain was gone and I have not had any problems with it since. Anne has a question. Anne wants to know, and this is for Dr. Thors, this is a specific question. She wants to know where's the vascular care place that you're talking about? We've said it's at a separate location, so Anne wants to know sure. where she can go to 
Yeah, so our, our clinic office is out at the Indian, Indian Creek campus here um, in Kansas City. So that's uh, 435 in Knoll area. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's uh, where our clinic uh, space is located. And I have uh, um, uh, seven other partners uh, who are also vascular surgeons. Uh, and uh, we also share this office with our interventional radiology colleagues, our cardiology colleagues, and we have a new vascular medicine specialist uh, who deals with vascular medicine issues. So uh, again, a collaborative team all in one space. That's really, it's really special. And I want to touch on this a little bit more, the Center for Advanced Vascular Care. We've been showing you some video from there. That's Dr. Adam Alley, who we had on a, a past episode of All Things Hard, who saved someone, someone's limb. They were going to have to have their leg amputated, and yeah. he was able to just saved the whole leg. It was incredible. Uh, this is really the only program in the whole region where patients can go and get all their vascular care in one place, kind of like a, a cardiovascular home with all the services in one place. You can find experts in cardiology, interventional radiology, uh, allows doctors to treat patients with minimally invasive techniques, vascular medicine, vascular surgery, vein care, uh, I think I just saw Dr. Adam Alley giving someone a fist bump. Yeah. Okay, well, the doctors here are so cool. That's a doctor that saved someone's leg. Dr. Thors, what would be the benefit to patients to have all these specialists just in one location? Well, number one, convenience. You know, we all know mm -hmm. uh, that uh, getting around to doctor's visits at different locations is time consuming and um, uh, having us all under one roof. Uh, is is convenient uh, not only that uh, we have uh, the ability to talk to each other uh, directly and immediately and and solve questions and problems immediately um, so the speed of care is also uh, um, uh, increased right. uh, by having that um, having all of us under one roof you had a lot of people just at the word convenience yes because yeah. when you're driving all around town looking for different specialists and different people, that can you, no one can take a day off of work Correct. to do that, yeah. and this would be so helpful. Uh, probably a lot of you are watching right now and wondering if you're at risk for PAD. I know anytime we do a new topic, we're all wondering, oh my gosh, do I have that? must be what it's like to be in med school. You wonder <laughs> if you have everything. So we have a great tool for you. Here's Program Director Amy Mahaffey. So if you're curious as to whether you are at risk for peripheral artery disease, we do have a screening, an online screening um, test that you can go to the uh, KU website and, and look up the uh, PAD screening. And it goes through a series of questions to determine if you are at risk for peripheral artery disease. That, the results of, those, of that screening goes to our nurse coordinator who reviews those re results it's super easy to take this online screening quiz. I just took it a couple of days ago. Here's what it looks like. Amy says every single test result, this is the best part, is automatically sent to a nurse coordinator. <clears throat> the nurse coordinator will review it and then they'll call you or contact you if you're at risk. So all you have to do is fill out this screening and they'll call you if they think there's a problem. So convenient and such a great peace of mind for anyone watching, so you can do that right now. I want to bring Ron back in for some uh, final thoughts. I want to start with you because we know how relieved you are to make it through this ordeal. What's it like now being out on the other side, talking to Dr. Thors again, and sharing your experience with, with all of us? Well, I'm glad that I was uh, being uh, asked to do this. Uh, I have very good results. And if people are watching and saying, you know, how, how bad was it? It wasn't. It was not bad at all. Uh, I felt very fortunate to have uh, Dr. Thors uh, as my uh, surgeon. And through all of this, uh, it has given me a lot of confidence. It has given me relief. Uh, it has given me a peace of mind. And so through all of this, uh, I am uh, very grateful uh, for the uh, service that I received uh, from Dr. Thor and his staff. Dr. Thors, what would you say to someone watching this who has leg pain, doesn't know why, might think they have a problem, what do they do? Uh, the first thing is just not to ignore it. Uh, we see a lot of uh, folks that uh, want to bury their head in the sand with these problems and unfortunately that doesn't work to solve right. them. And uh, 
So the first step would be to talk to their primary care doctors. Uh, um, and uh, furthermore, if, uh, if they are getting nowhere with that uh, strategy, we are always happy to see them at the Center for Advas Advanced Vascular Care here at KU. Well, we know Ron and his wife, Deanna, are clearly huge fans of yours. They could be in a cheering section <laughs> holding up posters for you. And we love this because so many of our patients develop these amazing personal bonds with their care teams here, which is why we love this next segment. It's called Behind the Mask, where we give you at home an opportunity to get to know what our healthcare workers are like on a personal level. And it turns out, Dr. Thors, you're quite the rambler. <laughs> you love exploring the United States. Most recently, Dr. Thors has been exploring Seattle, Arkansas, Colorado, and Alaska. Okay, that's an interesting mix. What's drawing you to those states? Yeah, I, I'm, I like outdoor activity, um, so uh, we spend a lot of time camping and fishing and, uh, and really traveling the country in our motorhome. Uh, oh, I love that. And so uh, it's a great way to travel as a family together, and uh, we see a lot of the gems of this country uh, that uh, yeah, you really don't have to travel to other countries to see, so it's, uh, it's been uh, Quite a good time. I just saw a green sports car. What was that? Yeah, that was uh, that was a little uh, uh, racing thing that my wife uh, got me uh, for one weekend to drive these exotic cars. So. A racing thing? <laughs> Where was uh, the way you have to explain that? More was that was uh, in Atlanta on okay. the motor, motor speedway there, and nice. I, I might have a little obsession with uh, driving and uh, adrenaline adrenaline activities. So, oh, I like yeah. that. I mean, I would I, that would make sense. High pressure job, you like to blow off steam, yep. drive fast cars, do fun things. You mentioned your family. I want to pull up some more pictures of you and your family. Tell me about your wife, Misty, and your daughter, Christiana. Oh boy, they're beautiful. So the loves of my life, yeah. for sure. Um, uh, my wife has uh, been with me through medical school, through residency training, and obviously in practice. Uh, and then my beautiful daughter, Christiana, is 13 now and uh, uh, finishing eighth grade and just, uh, wow. again, uh, loves of my life. So she want to be a doctor like her daddy? I am not sure. Uh, she might want to do what you're doing. So I, oh, we'll, nice. We'll, send her we'll here. see. Yeah. We'll train her. <laughs> we, 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 t we love talent. Send, send, her, send her our way. Okay. I want to also talk about uh, World Heart Day because what better day to take care of your heart or start taking care of it if you haven't gotten on a fitness kick yet than um, incorporating the shape of a heart in your daily walk or your jog. Here's what some people are doing. Say so that <laughs> looks pretty weird, but there's this challenge, try to walk or jog in the shape of a heart. I think that looks like a popsicle or something. I love Loose Park, so last week I tried to take a walk in the shape of a heart. Okay, I'm no Lewis and Clark, but I tried to make it a heart. <laughs> so send us pictures of your heart-shaped exercise routine or route, and we will share them on our next episode. Either way, just go out and enjoy it. It's a beautiful day today. And thank you so much for being with us today. And thank you to Ron for sharing his health journey with us. Please give Deanna a big hug from us. We love her. Also, thank you to Dr. Axel Thors. You're so busy and you made time to come join us today. And we really appreciate that.